Hello and welcome to D20 Woodworking. And today we are playing through Wild Tales, a Pirate's Legacy, uh, uh, published by Button Shy Games. They sent me a copy of this game for uh, me to play through for you all. Now, really quick, this is a legacy one to two player game. Uh, I'm going to be playing the one player variant, but two player would work exactly the same. Uh, you just, instead of me taking both uh, players' turns, I, you would do one character and the other person would do the other. Now, really quick, important to note is that this is a legacy game, so a little bit will be spoiled for you. Um, just the very, very first scenario, there's nothing too revealing, um, but a little bit will be spoiled. So just, just know that as we get into things. So let's jump down to the table. This is our very first game set up. So the way that we kind of get things set up and know about is we... Where is it? On your rule book, there's a QR code. You will scan that QR code. And then I won't show you too much of what it says, but it brings up a website. And uh, I didn't want to show you too much because there's like story and stuff in there that you can read through and, and play through and all that fun stuff. Um, but that explains kind of why everything set the way it is with, with the certain cards. So this is our main threat up here. Uh, this is our pirate's log. This is our scene deck. These are our two heroes. So again, as, as a solo player, I will be controlling both of them. Uh, but if you're playing two player, one person can take one person, one would take the other. Now these two objectives down here, um, they're on these sides, but they could be swapped. They're not assigned to anyone yet. I just put them down here for now. Now the basic general way that this game works is on your pirate's log, you have it all set out of what your turn sequence is. So Anna will go first, then Samuel, then Anna, then Samuel, so on and so forth. Um, so you check for a crisis effect. We'll get into what that is later, but it's on this card. Uh, or it's on this card and this card, sorry. Uh, take one action, and there's four different actions you can do. You can either complete a scene event, which is this deck. You could do an objective, which is this card down here or this card you could attack the threat which is trying to take out this and you can discard this active scene if you don't like this then you can store any resources if you would like to and then you check for end of round conditions which basically is if this deck is empty then it's the end of the round now the way that these two cards work in combination is these two work up so this is our threat on top and our, our journal card on the bottom or a log card on the bottom and when it's round one it will have no threat you can see the purple that's next to the word round um is off to the side now starting round two every time that purple symbol comes up on this threat deck or scene deck sorry scene deck um you will do a bad thing right a crisis thing will happen so it's it's important to kind of balance that out and, and keep track of that uh because a lot of bad things are going to probably happen in this game as you can tell kind of already, the bad things that happen, not a lot will happen, really nothing will happen round one, but as the game progresses through the seven rounds, a lot more will happen. Now, our hero card looks like this, and they have their different uh, stats, which we'll get into what those are on the right, and at the very bottom is when you do your objective. So you take your objective card, complete level one, complete level two, level three, level four, and as you complete, you're gonna get these special abilities on the bottom. Now, in order to advance your objective you can see in the red there has three swords and a barrel and that lets you level that card up now once you do the level up once you assign this card to one of these heroes and once they're assigned they stay with that hero right so if i get this person level two and i want to switch i can't do that right it has to stay on that person the stronghold in the middle here is basically a way to um put resources from one hero to the other. So you would take it from one hero, put it in the stronghold, then move it to the other one. Now there is a penalty or a cost to move it over to the other person, um, but that's basically how the stronghold works. Now in the campaign, more things will happen and you can kind of tell because there's like fancy boxes and stuff. So stuff will happen, but we're not gonna cover that right now. Now, as far as the main card goes, you can see down here, there are four different options. The very first one, uh, when you play a scene card, is usually free. I think it's always free. And you can take this card and use it as a coin resource. So you would take this card and you would tilt it this way, which shows that coin resource. Now, let's say you already have a sword resource on one of your heroes. You could spend that resource and get those three barrels. So you would hold it like that and you get your three barrels. If you have a barrel, you could trade it for three coins, which would get you onto this side and you get those three resources. The last thing you do is a skill check, which shows you need a skill of six, six mass. Now you can see on this hero, they only have three, and we'll get into how you would increase that or decrease or increase that uh, later. Um, but if you got it, you would get a diamond and a cannon, which is on this part of the card. Now diamonds cost, or diamonds can be used for any resource, right? So besides cannons. So there's uh, coins, barrels, and swords, or your three resources. Diamonds can be used for any of those. Cannon is just separate, right? Cannon is always a cannon. So 
Anyway, let's shuffle up this deck, and we will first... We will go through this. Um, we should be able to go through the whole thing of the very first game that you play all seven rounds. We'll see. I might lose a bit uh, before that, because I'm not great at this game. Um, but we'll go through, and I'll explain things as we kind of go along. And I might have to reference the rules, because there's a few little rules that I'm always a little shaky about. So, the very first thing you have to do is check the crisis. Now, um, like I said, in the very beginning... There is no crisis effect because this pur little purple symbol isn't lined up with anything. So now we would take one action. Again, just so that you can see, our four actions are um, to complete one scene event, to gain one objective level, which is these cards down here on the table, attack the threat, which we would have to do with um, using five mass. And when they capture cards, um, the mass threat gets worse. And lastly, we could just discard the scene card, right? We could just throw it away if we really didn't want it, but we're not going to do that right now. So Anna's going to go first in her turn. Uh, she checks the crisis event. Nothing going on. So she takes her one action. We're just going to take this card and we're going to do the first thing, which is just to use it as a coin. So we're just going to take the coin. You would probably put these underneath your cards, but I keep like knocking them over and it's not great. So that's going to be that. All right. So now we would, um, we could move resources to the stronghold. We're not going to do that. And now we can check for end of round. There's still cards in this deck, so the end of, end of round trigger does not happen. Um, let me just uh, double check the rules on end of round because I want to make sure that there's nothing else. Now, there are two rule books. So you kind of have to bounce back and forth or, or go back and forth between them. Um, bu -bu -bu, managing rounds. If the deck is empty at the end of any turn, the round ends. If it is the seventh round or the discard pile is empty, the players lose the scenario. Um, otherwise, start a new round before your partner starts their turn. So you would shuffle your discard. Um, you, I'm sorry, you would shuffle your discard pile to form a new deck. You would capture one scene from the top of the deck, which will explain what that is, and then shift the pirates log to the right. So we'll explain what that is in a little bit too. All right. So we checked everything. Now we check crisis again. Samuel goes, and really the only thing you could do right in the beginning is just take the resources. So we're going to take that free resource. Uh, we're not going to move anything. Nothing ends. All right. Now it's Anna's turn. Nothing happens. So we could spend a coin. Well, we can't really do anything yet. Six feather. We can't do much yet. So I'll show you the bottom of this card. Uh, now I shouldn't be showing you because I shouldn't be seeing what's next in the card. Uh, but I just want to show you really quick. These are the options, but there is no coin option. So we can't really do much with it. So... We'll take the coin. So now we have stashed two coins. Again, step three, nothing happens. Step four, it's not end of round, so we don't have to worry about it. Now, crisis check. Now it's Samuel's turn. Um, so we have a sword. We still can't spend anything, which stinks. So again, we're just going to take another sword, I guess. Um, we are starting to get our stuff, though. Do all of our checks. Nothing happens. Crisis, nothing happens. Now it's Anna's turn. <laughs> this, is, this is a really bad draw for, for our heroes. All right, so we're going to take the two coins because that's our top option there is to take the two coins. So we're going to take that, do all of our checks. We're not going to move any resources around. Now, Anna and Samuel can hold as much as they want. The stronghold can only hold up to three resources, zero to three resources. Do all of our checks, nothing happens. In the first round, it goes pretty quick with everything. Um, wow, okay. All right, so we can't spend a coin or a barrel, so we could just take swords. Okay, Samuel, we have a lot of swords. Jeez Louise. Okay, so we do all this, whatever. Now it's Anna's turn. Again, we would do all the checks and everything. Nothing happens now. We can finally, let me take this whole pile out because I might have to do something different. We could take the barrel for free or we could spend one of our coins to get two swords in a barrel, which could be worth it. Uh, probably is. And uh, if we had a sword, we could spend it. We could do a fist check, but we're, well, no, we're probably not going to do that yet. So I like the idea of spending coins, right? So we're going to spend a coin. Um, we're going to pick, we're going to pick the, out of all the coins we have, we have uh, a single and two doubles and we had another single. If we do the two double one, we could spend the resources on the card throughout the entire turn, but anything that's left over gets thrown away. So hypothetically, if we spent one coin now, um, and then one coin, like later on in our turn, we could use both the coins, but if we just spent that one card and didn't use the other one. We would lose it. We can't like mentally be like, oh, this one has one left. Um, so that's important to know. So we spent a coin, so we get two swords and a barrel, which is pretty good. We'll be able to get this card, which is nice. Uh, we do everything. Nothing happens. So now Samuel is going to check crisis. Again, none of that's happening. So for this one, oh my gosh, we're going to end up with another sword. 
All right, what we're going to do is a skill test instead because this is this is getting bad. So the skill test shows a fist, right? So we need six fists. Now Samuel only has four on his card. So the way that you do this is we're going to pull this card down. If this symbol matches the next symbol, we automatically lose. If they're different, we take the that little ribbon number and add to it. So this will make sense in a second. We do Samuel. He has four fists. We're doing a skill test against six, right? It says six down here. So we're going to pull this top card. It's a different symbol and it has a four on it, which means we take that four and add it to our four fists, which means we have enough. So the skill test, because we only needed six, we had eight, succeeds, and we get a cannon and a diamond, which is nice. We continue doing all of our other skill checks and all that fun stuff. We have nothing to do. So now um, we do it with Anna. Again, no threat or anything. So now we can actually get this, right? Spend three coins and a sword. Now it's inefficient because we... Hmm. All right, let me think for a second. Actually, with Samuel, we might want to move a sword over. All right, I think we're actually doing it. Before we would have moved over, Samuel can do an action to move this over into the stronghold. All right. Um, so now one of the things with the stronghold that's important to note because this works a little bit differently is... Bu -bu -bu, um, so you have this ability, right? Which down at the bottom of your hero just says smuggle and it's one plus a question mark. So what it states for uh, smuggling is uh, that... Um, Let's find it. Take any amount of resources from the empire and tuck them under your character. So the cost is one of anything. All right. So we could do actions anytime we want. Um, so I'm actually going to take this card and I'm going to pay one of the one of the resources on this card. Now I can again, like I said, this re, this card has three resources. We have access to all three until the very end. So I'm going to use one of the resources. It doesn't really matter. We'll say it's the sword. Uh, but we're going to use all the resources on it to to pull this card. I guess this is a little inefficient too. I could have just thrown it away, but I just wanted to show you how this whole trading thing works. Um, so now we could do our actual action, right? That was just our ability. Abilities you can do anytime. For actual action, we're going to get the explosive. So it's going to be three coin and a sword. We're going to use one of the swords that's on here. And then we're going to use the three coins. Again, I know this was a little inefficient, but I just wanted to show you how the stronghold works. And then Anna gets the level one. Now on the bottom here, you can see with level one, there's a little fist icon, which means that her fist total went from five to six now. So it permanently got upgraded a little bit, which is really nice. So Anna has that. We still have a sword resource. Um, we're not going to move everything here. There's no end around yet. Oops, I shouldn't have pulled that. Um, so we're good to go. Now it's Samuel's turn. Now Samuel can get the three swords in the barrel, which I think is actually what we're going to do is level him up. Um, so we're going to use all these cards. And we're going to get first level. He adds a mask icon. So he's up to four masks, which is nice. We check everything else. We, we, we're not going to move anything or anything like that. Um, so now we check for this icon. Nothing goes on yet. Now it's Anna's turn. Um, so we could spend a sword to get three coins, which is actually really good because we need three coins. So we're going to spend the sword to take three coins. Okay, we have three coins now. And then the last thing is that we will... Um, Check everything, move everything over. We're not going to do any of that. Check crisis. So the very last thing we can do with Samuel is we have five feathers. So we can't do a skill check because there's no other cards left. So that's one of the important things to know. So we'll just take the barrel. I'll just do that. All right. So now it's the end of the round. So um, if the deck is empty at the end of any turn, uh, the round ends. So the round is end. Uh, if it's the seventh round or if the discard pile is empty, which neither is the case, the players will lose the scenario. So now we would shuffle these cards to form a new deck. And the top card now becomes a capture card for them. Um, the reason that this is important is because now to defeat him, you need a mask on, on I'm sorry, on, on this card. It shows you need five masks plus one per capture card. So now there's one capture card, so we need six masks to, to defeat him. Now, the way you defeat him now is you would do six, six mass damage um, and would get rid of this threat card first before you can actually defeat him. So the way we're going to win is we have to level all these up to four, right? So this goes to four, this goes to four. We need to defeat all the cards underneath this guy and then defeat this guy 
uh, with the final blow. That's how it generally works. And you just rinse and repeat this process over and over and over. So now we're going to be on round two. As we showed you before with round two, every time that purple icon shows up in the beginning of the round, we're going to do the hook thing. And the hook says, discard the bottom card from the scene deck. So we get rid of that card on the bottom. Okay, cool. Uh, we're going to start with Anna. And then uh, we just keep going. So... The very first thing we do is we check to see if that purple icon matches. It does not. This icon at the very top is a green like little stripe thing. So we don't have to do that. But now we have to like actually pay attention to that. All right. So we have three coins. We need a sword. Which we can't get, unfortunately. Um, let's see. We'll just take the coin. So we have four coins on us now. We're not going to move anything over. Yeah, we're not going to move anything over. We're not going to do anything else. So now we check again. It's a purple thing. We have a orange eye there. So that doesn't that doesn't do anything. Oh, we can get rid of this barrel to get two swords in the barrel, right? So we have one barrel. We're going to throw that away. And then we did the second line, which got rid of a barrel. We get two swords in the barrel, which is a pretty good trade. Um, so we'll do that. We're not going to move anything to the middle. No end around. Now, this does have the purple icon. Right, the purple icons on this card. So as this card states, discard the bottom card of the scene deck. So we just take this out. Oops, it was upside down. And we would throw this away. Now it now it starts Anna's turn. So with that card, we, we oh we need the swords, is what we actually need. So that works out well. So we'll take the swords. Okay, do everything, nothing happens. Samuel, um, Check there. It's not purple. This is a yellow lightning bolt on there. And uh, actually, all right. This we can just pull top item is to get the sword. So we can just get a sword so he can do the hideout next turn. All right. Now we do everything again. He's not going to move anything. It's not end of round. It is now Anna's turn. We check that. It's purple versus green. We're good. Now we're going to level this up. So we're going to spend... Three coins and a sword. So three coins and a sword. We get to keep one coin still. And this now levels up to level two. So now, not only do we have a oops, a fist icon, we have two extra masks on us too. So now we have six, which means we're actually decently strong. Especially against the threat here. Not going to move anything over. Yeah, we're not going to move anything over, so we're good there. Okay, cool. We check the crisis, or they check this icon. Nothing happens, so we're good there. Now Samuel's going to go. Um, okay, so we have three swords in the barrel. We might as well do that. So this levels up. Now with this one leveling up, we have extra mass and two extra feathers onto our stat line, which is pretty, pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Okay. Again, check everything. We know that Christ icon's not bad. I do want to a attack um, this thing. So really quick to, to look that up. Um, when you attack the threat, perform a skill check to see if you defeat them. Um, the oops, the target value is the sum of the threat's base skill value plus the number of captured cards. After uh, checking, always discard the active scene regardless of the outcome. So we will do a skill check there. Um, and then really quick, I just want to make sure something else. Um, all right. So for skill checks, you would use one of the symbols that are here. Um, each skill check, uh, target value for, and a certain skill to begin a check, slide the active scene off the deck and place it next to the reveal card. Now the top card of the deck, you will compare the active scene to reveal card. So it's kind of the same thing we were doing before. So we'd add extra amount so we can do a lot more, um, for that, for that skill check. And then the only other thing I want to make sure that I'm doing right. Um, um, okay. Pretty sure we're good there. Objectives. So just to read the rules so you know the objectives, each objective has four levels. After you complete both objectives, um, you can uh, eliminate the threat and win the scenario. To gain a level, you must pay its level up cost. Some of them have a boat icon. When you gain the first level, align the objectives uh, indicated with level one, your character, and subsequent levels, shift the card over and uh, keep doing that over and over. All right. So we are going to attack this threat. So we have 
Uh, we need six masks. We have four plus two. So we already have the six. As long as these two symbols don't match, we don't get an auto fail. They are different, so we would add two more onto it. Um, so we take out the threat that's underneath this card, which is the main reason why we wanted to do that. Now it's Samuel's turn. I guess we'll just take the, the barrel. We're going to need this barrel. So we'll take this barrel. And that'll be the end. So that's the end of everything. We shuffle this up. Continue process. Now, as you go along in the campaign, I will say that it gets a little more not complicated, but there's more to it. Um, just the first round is supposed to be like simpler. All right. So this is our, our deck. Let's top cards upside down, but it's going to be captured anyway. All right. So round two, we now have for round two. Oops. Oh, I'm sorry. Round three. Second second one we now have two symbols we have to worry about right the j or i'm sorry not j the 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 moon thing and the uh purple thing this is round three not round two we started on round one all right anna we have a coin we need two more coins and a sword we can get the sword Actually, we do a mask check we have six that would get us two diamonds i think we're gonna do it so we're gonna do the mask check Right, so it's eight. We have four plus two. So we're we just need two more. So the top number, we have failed. All right, so it is a different symbol, but it's not enough. It's only a one on top of that card. So that gets discarded, and unfortunately, nothing good happens with us there. So we have failed that skill check. We're not gonna move anything over, we're not gonna do anything else. So now we have to check. This wasn't anything, right? So now this does have the moon icon, is one of the things. This has the moon icon, so now. We discard the scene from the bottom of the deck. So we discard that one. Okay, now it's Samuel's turn. Um, we don't need a barrel. Do we have a lot of feathers? Oh, we do have seven feathers. So we can skill check on the eight feather. We currently have five on our main card and on two on our level up card. So we're gonna skill check. All right, they are different and it's a three. So we have succeeded. So we get the two diamonds and the cannon. All right, so diamonds can be, again, used for any resource but cannons. Um, we're not going to move anything over. It's not end of round, so we're good there. So now we check. This is a yellow lightning bolt. Nothing happens there. So now it's Anna's turn. We do need the sword. We could spend the coin to get two swords in a barrel. It doesn't really help us, though. What about fists? We do have six fist option, which doesn't really help us. Okay, so we're just going to take the sword. That's fine. We're not going to move anything over. Not end of round yet. Sorry, this card's upside down. Not end around yet. Um, so now we check. This is an orange eye. Isn't uh, one of the things. So now it's Samuel's turn. We could use the barrel. That's a lot of barrels, though. We don't really need... Oh, but we could use a barrel to get three swords. I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to use a barrel. So this card states you can use a barrel. So we threw away one, and we get three swords. So we're going to tuck that underneath our card, and we're good to go there not going to move anything over it's not the end of the round now we do checks this is the purple thing now so the purple thing now is we uh, capture a top card from the discard pile so now his threat is growing even more now the reason it's bad besides that it gets harder to remove the threat is that if the discard pile gets thinned out we go through rounds faster and we can do less things which is bad and if this is ever empty then we lose the game all right so now anna we need coins. Five fists. We do have six fists. Do we do a test? I think we're going to do a test. So the test is for eight fists. We have five, six. We'll check the card underneath. It succeeds. It's a different symbol. Um, and we get three extra onto it. So we get two diamonds and a cannon. Two diamonds in a cannon, and we succeed there. All right, cool. We're not going to move anything over. It's not the end of the round yet. Now we check the threat. There's nothing there. We're good. Samuel's turn. I do want to level up. So I'm going to use the three swords and the one barrel. It's going to use an excessive amount, right? We have a lot, but we'll just use it all because I'd rather level up. Um, so we're going to level up. Now, what's interesting with this on the level up is... This third thing now has a coin. Basically, we have a coin resource permanently now so we can just keep using coins over and over and over now this doesn't really help us as much as it helps anna um but if we need to spend that coin resource on one of the scene cards we could do that right to, to level up faster with with uh, or get a uh, better resource on the card so that is something that we could do now all right cool 
So that's the end of Samuel's turn. We do all checks. Nothing happens. So we check this. Nothing happens. It's Anna's turn. Um, oh, we do have enough to level up. So we're going to do that, right? Because we have, we need three coins and a sword. We have one coin, a sword, and then two diamonds, which can be used for anything. So we'll use them as uh, coins. So we'll throw them away. Then we level up. And now she has a barrel resource. So we're only one level off of like being completely leveled up. And then we have to just take out this, this Raiders card. All right, so now it is Samuel's turn. Again, we do the checks. Nothing happens because nothing has been happening. What we're going to do is use our permanent coin to get the three barrels. It says that for next round. The deck has ended. The round ends. Oops, this card's upside down. I guess I should check really fast to make sure that they're all facing the right way. Don't mind my phone. Um, okay. All right, so we shuffle this. So now the other problem is our deck is a bit thinned out, so we have to kind of go after the Raiders a bit um, because this is thin, and we're going to capture another card. And again, this shifts over. Now, one thing to note is now one of the threats is a J. We don't know what that J is yet, so nothing happens. So we don't have to worry about that. But in the future, you might. Slash probably will. Okay. So Anna's turn first. The threat does line up. So the sword. Capture a top card from the discard pile. There is none. So we don't have to do that. So that's kind of nice. All right. So Anna can spend the barrel. But there is no barrel. So that's not great. What's her feather count? Not great. And we have no items. Okay. So I guess we're just going to get a barrel. That's not great. That was a bad turn for Anna. So now it's going to be Samuel's turn. We do the checks. Nothing lines up, so we're good there. He has three barrels. We need a bunch of swords is what we need. We can get a sword. Yeah, we might as well just get the sword. All right. So we're going to put that under there. We do the checks. Everything's good. Here, we do the checks. It's an eye, so that doesn't do anything, so we're fine. Um, Anna, 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 Anna. So we have a permanent barrel. We could get the three coins with that. So we're going to spend our barrel resource and get three coins, which is going to help us a lot because now we just need a sword with Anna and we're good to go. All right. Do all of our checks, everything. So this purple thing does line up with the bones. It has no effect currently. Okay. So currently it has no effect. Um, so you can see down here, the bones has no effect right now. Again, Probably change later. So Samuel's turn. We need swords is what we need. Oh, we can get two more swords right off the bat. So we're just going to do that, which means we can level that up soon. All right. So now it's Anna's turn. We check. Nothing happens. Um, two more barrels. We don't need the barrels, but what we're probably going to do is try to take out one of these cards because he's got five, six, seven, eight masks right now, and we have four, five, six. So we'll do a skill check. Again, we pull the top card down. It's different. So what do we have? Four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. Okay, we succeed. So this card goes away. One of these cards goes away. And now he's a little bit weaker, which is nice. That's the end of Anna's turn. Now it's Samuel's turn. We have enough to level our thing up. Um, right? One, two, three swords and barrel. Yep, so we're going to spend all of this and level up. So this is level up all the way. We just need to get this card level up all the way, and then we can attack and win. Now, the last symbol on there is a little bit different because the symbol on these cards are pretty obvious except for the little um, the little target thing, which I don't always remember what that is because I've already forgotten. Uh, it has to do with your threat. It has to do with the threat, I should say. Um, so four, half the requirements to eliminate the threat, right? So instead of us needing five, six, seven, I think you round up to so be, what, four then? Um, you would only need four, right? Four, four mass thing to get rid of it so that's important okay now it's anna's turn again nothing lines up so we don't have to worry about the threat checks um she needs a sword that's a sword so we will be able to level up next turn the deck has run out so we are done oh, i'm feeling pretty uh feeling oops that card's upside down feeling pretty good about this feeling like we're doing all right so Let's get this going, and then uh, this this will probably be the last round. So we capture the top card. He's got a decent amount on. Round four. Okay, so now it's Anna's turn. Um, I believe it always starts with the, the first player. It might switch. So I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, but we do have a bad symbol. 
which we discard the bottom card. So we discard this card. This deck is really thinned out, which is not great. But our very first thing we can do with Anna is level this up. We need three coins and a sword. We have three coins and a sword. So we can get rid of this. We are leveled up. So now we just have to keep attacking him and get all this down and we win. But this deck is also very thinned out. So Samuel's going to go. Samuel's going to attack. Again, he needs half the amount. So he has three mask, four mask against five, six, seven, eight. So we're halfway there. So we need... Actually, no, I'm sorry. We are there as of right now. So it's three, four, and it's half the target. So it's five, six, seven, eight. Half of that is down to four. So as long as this isn't an auto fail, we're good. It's not. And it's a zero, which is crazy. So we do one damage. There we go. Now it's Anna's turn. We do have to do the checks. Um, that doesn't match any of this, so we're good to go. Anna is going to do, what is her mass count? four five six so we already are good as long as this is an auto fail it is not and we're getting kind of lucky with that so that gets discarded which is good now it's samuel's turn we check purple is a thing it has no effect currently as of right now the skull has no effect again you can see how in the future rounds this will be harder because as those things happen that's that's gonna stink um so what i say samuel's turn i think um so samuel we can't do anything because this is the last Last card. When's the last card? Um, there's nothing to skill check again, so we can't do a skill check on this, unfortunately. So we're just going to discard this card uh, because we want to keep that discard pile as big as possible. So again, we shuffle up. I should probably also get rid of that card, but... I don't know if you can. I guess you can just spend it. That I'm not 100% sure on. All right, we're almost near the end. So he's going to capture a card. This moves over to round six out of seven, which should be pretty good. Anna goes first. Again, I don't know if that's 100% true, but I'm going to say it's true. It might alternate between the two. Um, so that, that might be a rules error right there. Bad symbol. Nothing matches there. So we're good. We're going to check. We have four, five, six against five, six, seven. Uh, so half of seven is three and a half. You, you move it up to, to four. So we're going to do the check. They are different, and we add three onto it. So we get rid of one of those cards. Now it's our turn here. The lightning symbol matches up. So capture the top card from the discard pile, which stinks. So that he gets another one of those. We're going to do, again, the same exact thing over and over. So it's three, four against five, six, seven. So it's four against four. As long as this succeeds, it does. We're good. All right, he's a little bit weaker. Do all of our checks. Now this purple or blue moon does match with the skull. It has no effect, so we don't have to worry about that. So we do our check of four, five, six against his six, but it's half, so it's really three we have to worry about. So we succeed as long as this is an auto fail. It's not. Now again, just so that you know when I'm pulling these cards, oops. If those two symbols match, that purple symbol and that blue symbol, then it's an auto fail. That's that's what I mean when I'm pulling them for an auto fail. So that's the end of that. All right, so now we do the purple symbol with here. Discard the bottom card of the scene deck, which should be fine. We just have to do the last thing. Um, again, skill check his five, round down, that's three. And we have three, four. So as long as this is an auto fail, we have succeeded, and it's not. He is taken out. That is the first scenario completed, just like that. So anyway, uh, hopefully that makes sense. I know it's kind of hard to see this on this camera. Just... Button shy games are kind of small, so they're tough to see. Hopefully, the zoomed in version helped you out. But uh, yeah, that's how the game works. Now, after you finish this, you would go on your phone and you would read about the scenario outcome, whether win or lose, and different things would happen, right? Um, good things, bad things, whatever. The game state would change a bit, and then you go to the next step and play through that one. You continue the campaign just like that. So. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. I hope this was fun. I hope this was interesting. Um, and once again, this is Wild Tales from uh, Pirates Legacy from Button Shy Games. Make sure to go check it out. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. I hope you enjoy, um, you know, if you enjoy these type of games, it, it feels very similar to other Button Shy games. So uh, anyway, if you enjoy this video, enjoy this content, do me a huge favor, scroll down a bit, hit the like button, make sure you're subscribed. It really helps the channel out. And leave me a comment. Let me know if you're interested in this game, if we should do more playthroughs of this game or anything like that. And uh, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time.